I'm Dominic from Oracle Database Product Management and over the next 10 minutes I want to talk to you about what we're doing um, when you're building new applications, new generations of frameworks and languages um, when working with the Oracle Database. As a developer I don't think there's probably been a more exciting time. We have access to new languages, new frameworks, new source control systems and a new community to go through and work with. Uh, uh, us to solve the various problems and issues we encounter along the way. More importantly, we've never had such a big audience to consume the applications we've put together as well. We can build applications working collaboratively with other teams around the world to make the next generation of Facebooks and Amazon and eBay's. So, over the next 10 minutes, I want to quickly go through some of the things we're doing and what we plan to do in the future as well. So when I joined Oracle, we built applications um, on mainframes and on large Unix systems. We use low-level languages like C, Fortran, and COBOL, and those languages are still important to the enterprise today. However, when we built those applications, we had access to large teams. We did rigorous engineering. We documented everything extensively um, to put those uh, applications in play. One of the benefits we had was that we were catering for a very small number of users inside of an enterprise. It was typically numbered in hundreds as opposed to thousands um, at that point in time. And we um, did very well at that point in time and some people look back at that as the golden age. However, things changed and in the mid-1990s, um, as the PC became the norm for most users inside of an enterprise, we started having to produce richer, more interactive applications. And to a large part, this wasn't really an issue. We could guarantee that the end users would have the software on their desktop. And they ended up with a series of tools which, um, whilst it was difficult to maintain, they provided that rich, interactive and productive environment that they were after. Then everything changed, and everything changed in a revolutionary way. We moved from a situation where we were catering for a small group of users to one where we were building applications for millions of users. And these users expected the latest generation of functionality. They expected to be able to access their application not just on the browser or on their PC, but also on their mobile phone, on their interactive television. And that resulted in a completely different approach to the way we built and uh, uh, had to be much more responsive. We had to be able to respond to those changes uh, very quickly as well. Now, not only did we have to build applications, and if we did have to do that in isolation, it would have been a difficult period, but we also started to work together. We had access to tools such as GitHub, which meant that we could, for the first time ever, share huge quantities of code with people working around the world. We could work collaboratively together to solve some of the most difficult problems and some of the most pressing issues in that period of time. And an awful lot of work was done um, to actually resolve some of the issues we had with, between things like browser and compatibility and so on. And that work carries on today. We've ended up with a situation where the modern web today focuses on around technology like HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript to build those very rich interactive applications. And that's been important to us. And we haven't had to work in isolation. We have had access to technology like Stack Overflow, which enabled us to work on forums and collaboratively resolve issues. So things can change in a much faster um, fashion than we've been able to do too. Now, when you're building an application, it's unlikely that you're gonna work in a single language or a single framework. It's true you'll use the tool which best suits the problem you're actually looking to resolve. So for issues which are mission sensitive and very critical and highly performant, you're likely to use tools like C and C Sharp and Java to build the highest performant um, tool set that you can, which is able to fully exploit the underlying hardware that you have available to you. If you're looking to build something or prototype um, a piece of functionality or something that's likely to change, something that can be developed in a very rich and expressive way, you're likely to use the new generation of scripting languages, the ones which are continually evolving, Ruby, Python, um, even Perl and PHP, um, to build those um, tool sets. Um, Oracle has its own set of tools as well inside of this space to um, facilitate rapid application development as well. So Oracle Apex and our existing tools are, um, and the ADF frameworks that we use also can assist building these rich um, application frameworks too. 
The architectures, even recently, have changed. It used to be the case um, that when you were building an application in the past, you'd have a large database and a large multi-tiered platform as well. And a lot of the rendering and logic of the application would exist in the mid-tier. Recently, the advent of JavaScript and its emergence from just the browser um, to a situation where JavaScript is being used not just in the browser but also in the mid-tier and inside of the database in some instances as well um, has meant that we've seen a movement from a stateless based browser application to one that contains a lot more state than it did in the past. It has a lot more interactive capabilities. It's become a thicker entity in its own right to a situation where the mid-tier has also shrunk in size responding to that change on the browser. It's become thinner and more interactive and the services it provides have changed as well. And again, the database now acts not just as a relational store for information, but it may also contain documents um, in the form of JSON information as well as the standard relational structures. And it's true to say that we should see some applications built which have a different variation and a different level of interactivity and a different level of um, application logic existing in each one, every one of those tiers. And so we have to have the flexibility to build applications that are able to model that as well. So JavaScript has become a really important part in the way that people are looking to build applications as well. As I mentioned, JavaScript exists not just as a simple tool for building interactive and animation on side of the browser. It's become an asset in building the business logic that exists there too. And the same is true for the mid-tier. We've seen the emergence of technologies like Node.js, which has meant that um, we're able to do asynchronous callback and processing of information in a more scalable fashion than we've ever been able to do in the past. And talking about um, JavaScript, uh, an evolving language from, 19, uh, from the mid-1990s has evolved into a key asset for building applications today. And there's a significant number of frameworks which make that process e easier than it's ever been before as well. You can take a look at things like um, uh, jQuery and jQuery UI, which enable us to manipulate and navigate through the HTML document, change things on the fly, communicate asynchronously over technologies like Ajax um, to our mid-tier as well. That significantly simplified that whole process for us. Tools like AngularJS support the concept of a single page application and enable us to go through and template and build applications in a, in a, a much simpler declarative fashion than we've ever been able to do as well. And these frameworks, along with technologies and the continually improvements in performance of JavaScript, have revolutionized the way we're looking to build this technology moving forwards. And so from an Oracle's perspective, we're introducing new technologies, which will also mean that we can simplify this model too. We're looking to ensure that from an Oracle database perspective, we produce the richest set of interfaces and drivers for the database today. Now, that might come in the form of supporting our existing technologies, such as improvements that we can actually make for Java um, and C Sharp and a C programming language and technologies like PL SQL as well. And we'll continually improve the performance and the compliance with standards inside that space too. We are also working with our open source partners to improve drivers for PHP and Ruby, and Perl and uh, R to ensure that we have the richest interface and the richest constructs to support those languages too. Those languages that don't require native interfaces, we're also spending an awful lot of time working on new technology um, from uh, Oracle's Oracle REST Data Services. Or, and what we're doing with Oracle REST Data Services is providing a very rich REST-based API to enable um, languages, if they choose to, to work not over native interfaces, but over um, the REST-based service model. And we're working to produce a set of APIs that will enable you to access and retrieve information directly from the database via this rich REST API without the requirement to do an awful lot of coding and development work. So you can retrieve relational structures, you can re re retrieve JSON held inside of the Oracle database, or you can retrieve data held inside of Oracle's NoSQL database over a consistent set of services as well. Talking about JSON, we understand the importance of JSON and the ability to service and deliver JSON 
um, from the database uh, too. So inside of Oracle Database 12C Release 1, uh, 12102, um, we're now able to enable you to persist JSON structures directly inside of the Oracle database. And you can use that using native interfaces, no, native, effectively NoSQL based interfaces if you choose to. You can persist that JSON or retrieve that JSON using standard SQL constructs as well. So insert, update, delete. But one of the real benefits and one of the strong advantages that we have with JSON inside of the database today is the ability to go through and retrieve and exploit the rich analytics that are available uh, inside of the Oracle database. This means that you can parallelize, a, you can parallel query, parallel query the JSON held inside of the database. You can go through and access the rich analytic operations as well, giving you a number of choices and capabilities inside of that space. Now, we'll go into a lot of these details and capabilities um, for the languages and frameworks over a series of videos upcoming. So, thanks very much.